So I called my presentation the time, the timing could have not been worse, and actually this is because I will refer to the experience I had in last half a year working in St. Petersburg in Russia, and as you know what has been happening in, in the global politics, and especially in Russia in half a, last half a year was pretty dramatic, but actually, I mean, based on these case examples, I would like to speak about the question of engagement or disengagement or otherwise about curatorial responsibility that one has as a curator finding yourself in the times of political con uh, conflict and also which kind of responsibility institution has in this moment. So this is a little, a little bit what I also have learned from this experience. But first, just a little few words about context of working in Russia. So on one hand, Russia, we have seen in last years an amazing examples of art activism with groups like Vaina or Pussy Riot and art that actually doesn't need curators or doesn't need institutions, that doesn't want to be exhibited in the galleries. Art that uh, exists through some kind of a public gesture, so this is an action from Vaina Group from 2010 with this huge penis on the uh, St. Petersburg Bridge during the Global Economic Forum, just opposite the uh, former KGB building. Uh, and, and at the same time, more or less 2011, uh, Roman Abramovich, a famous oligarch, Russian oligarch, he ought, was um, arriving to Venice, uh, just opposite Giardini, so somehow it was a gesture that now oligarchs also has found the interest in art. So it, of course, split it very much in general, uh, Russian art scene with, with this market-oriented attitude and, uh, and an amazing art activist scene. And uh, somehow this image is also inspired mm, from the analysis of Ekaterina Degot, a Russian writer and curator. So this is somehow a context in which one finds itself when you start and go to work in Russia. But um, the project I was involved with and was a very contested project was Manifesta 10 in St. Petersburg which was invited to the Winter Palace, you know, one of the most, uh, Hermitage, one of the most famous museums and oldest museums in the world. And um, actually what, of course, stirred some controversies is this manifesto as a biennial, uh, claiming itself a young biennial is going to such a vertical institution, like the institution of power also connected with the Russian power, of course. Uh, but of course, the context of St. Petersburg is extremely interesting. It's a city built as a mimicry of Europe, basically, built as a copy-paste of the best architecture of 18th, 19th century in Europe and transported to Russia, which, of course, in the present context is even more um, inspiring and problematic at the same uh, time. Also, what happened throughout uh, preparation of Manifesta was two waves of boycotts, and first wave of boycott was coincided with the fact that there was an anti-LGBTQ laws in Russia and uh, at the same time, actually, almost the same time, the main curator was appointed, Kasper Koenig. So also many artists working then later were inspired uh, and somehow informed by this fact and inspired by this fact. But also later on, I, I started to work in, in January 2014 and uh, at the same time, of course, soon later, um, annexation of Crimea happened and then also this uh, informed very much and changed actually the course of the events for all of us and for all the artists I have invited. And of course we have asked ourselves, uh, and also I'm Polish by origin, so for me also working in Russia is pretty problematic. There is a, in the post, all post-communist sphere special relation that uh, absolutely you cannot romanticize Russia, but you have also certain proximity, historical proximity with this country. And we have asked ourselves also, how do we respond to the boycotts together with the artists that I invited? One of them was Aleftina Kakhidze, an Ukrainian artist. For her, maybe even more difficult to, to, to work there. This is a drawing she made from Moscow protest against annexation of Crimea in March 2014. And we thought to ourselves, okay, so boycotts are a political, boycott is of course a political tool which can be efficiently used in different contexts. But, um, if, so you can either you can consider withdrawal and you can either stay or go and both options were actually um, possible for us. Of course, going as a curator is something else than going as an artist because as an artist, as Stojelaj did it, you can just leave and make an artistic statement out of it. And probably for a curator, if you leave, the leave would have to be a collective leave together with your artist because you don't want to leave all the people you invited behind you. So it would have to be a collective decision. But anyhow, we have talked about this and just very short timeline of this situation and so uh, well there was um, the call for boycott and there many days have passed bef before the situation uh, in, in Ukraine escalated and the moment that Manifesta made a statement 
And this, uh, I mean, here I'm speaking about manifesta, but actually I want to speak in general and raise a question about institutions, is that are really institutions who claim to be politically prepared, are they prepared to face such circumstances? Because if an institution is not making a statement for at least two weeks, of course all the statements are already done for this institution. So maybe you should <coughs> be ready to take responsibility and, and come forward with how you feel about the situation and how you position yourself. It's extremely important to have the responsibility and not only responsibility to your, towards your partners or towards PR or stakeholders, because this is what I have heard a lot working in this context. So together with, this is a kind of a map of artists of the public program I invited, we decided that, okay, boycotts is also a way of continuing, but not continuing undisturbed. So that was our position. We will continue, but somehow we will be informed, changed and disturbed by the context that have been there. And also, we considered withdrawal as a political gesture only in the moment if you withdraw, if, you cost, if that costs you something. So, if you withdraw uh, in the moment that you are censored or that you are intimidated somehow, then your withdrawal is, is gaining some kind of a political stance and not only withdrawal because it will feel, make you feel better. And also, another important fo a point in Russia was, you know, back in March, uh, all press in Sweden, in Poland, in, in Europe was all around the Ukrainian and still is, of course, around Ukrainian-Russian conflict and war. But when you would arrive in Russia, you would not hear about Ukraine. There was, or, or Crimea, or some people didn't know the word annexation. So somehow the, 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 the problem looked like there was no lack of urgency or didn't exist. And this, of course, was one more reason somehow to stay there and to activate public space, or try to activate public space. And now, uh, just three um, examples of, of projects, how different artists responded to this situation. So, uh, first is Alexandra Pirici, she's a Romanian artist, and she's making this, uh, what she calls additions, sculpture additions to the monuments. This is an addition to the very famous monument Lenin at the Finland station, a place where Lenin arrived back in 1917 uh, in the sealed train and was preaching the revolutionary ideas. So for her it was also very important somehow through this <coughs> very uh, delicate and subtle gestures to, to disempower the starkness of the monuments and somehow with this uh, create also an energy, a possibility of a social energy that is, change, that is leading to a possible shift. So uh, in other words, something that Elżbieta Madinia, a Polish sociologist, describes as a moment of performative democracy where things are possible, or, or certain revolutionary energy, energy that enables a change, a possible change. Uh, another example I would like to mention is a project of Kristina Norman, uh, an artist from Tallinn, Estonia, and she uh, found a big similarity, visual similarity, between Main Square in Kiev and Main Square in St. Petersburg. I mean, it seems a bit far-fetched, but actually when you look closer at the, the architecture, there is, it's, they are not so different. And she was particularly interested in this public sculpture, you can say. It's a Christmas tree that was put in, in Maidan in November 2013 and was never decorated, was never finished because became like a culture meme, became like a sign on which different protesters started to put different messages. And uh, um, also uh, people were guarding that no, none of the messages is monopolizing the others, so it was also like a very democratic sign. And uh, we used our position somehow of certain closeness with the city of St. Petersburg uh, to, uh, tra to transport the empty Christmas tree in, in July, in summer, and put it outside of the Winter Palace uh, as a possible empty sign of maybe disobedience or thinking of disobedience to come. And one more project of Pablo Braila, uh, um, artist from Moldova, golden, golden snow of Sochi, of 40 kilograms of snow that was artificially produced for the Mediterranean cl climate in Sochi, that he brought back also in July to, to St. Petersburg and let it melt in, in the middle and also turned it into kind of participatory snow fight, uh, which uh, at the end was uh, the, the Russian uh, television was extremely terrorized, I think, by, by this uh, think if, a beginning thinking of it as a very nice action. So those, I mean, there are more examples, but this is somehow, somehow, since we are here in the art context, how the artists respond and what is their responsibility in this. And uh, just to wrap up at the end, so of course you have to ask yourself what is to be done, how do you continue, how do you do co continue disturbed by the situation, which is the agency of art. And also, in this case, escaping from this thinking that 
always everything will, what will happen in Russia will be by definition wrong. Uh, and uh, this image is actually from New York, it's Reverend Billy, but refers to what Nora Stansfield, the curator from Austria, and me thought about our positions as an independent curator, that you are at the same time activist and at the same time a policeman. And you are somehow dealing with those two positions and trying to merge them. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, it seems that you often end up in quite difficult situations, like this one with Manifesta, but also in the in the Berlin Biennial with Artur Szymiewski, uh, you had the, had the same kind of, or not the same, but a different kind of negotiation. Why, why is that, that you end up in those situations? Well, <laughs> it's true, it's not the first time, but I don't know if, I, I don't think I'm really looking for them, but once I'm there, I'm trying to confront it. But the, I mean, it seemed when I was going to work in this project, I thought it's going to be the most apolitical project in first, in, in which I'm invited. But at the end, and then Zmieski was also telling me to withdraw at one point, and I was telling him, listen, it's exactly the same questions as from the Berlin Biennale, now in Russia, but for real. Mm -hmm. you know, so somehow, there was a very weird continuation of the Berlin Biennale mm. difficulties here. It's an interesting to Russia. comparison that in, in the first one, it's like in the art circle, and then it's in the real situation, in the street in a way. Yeah, yeah. it was, for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.